Now we are going to discuss uh, points and crossings, or you can say the turnout. Combination of points and crossings by manipulation of which a train may be transferred from one track to another track is called turnout. A turnout may be left hand turnout or right hand turnout. The two possibilities are there, left hand turnout or right hand turnout. This is very important. The distance from the toe of the switch to the heel of crossing is called overall length of turnout. I will explain this term further on the next slides, but just keep this thing in the mind that the distance from the toe of the switch to the heel of crossing is called overall length of turnout. Components of a turnout. A pair of stock rails, a pair of tongue rails, a V crossing, two check rails, switch tie plate and crossing tie plate, rods, crank lever for operating the points, studs, bearing plates, stretcher bars, plunger bars. So these are the different components of a turnout. Now look at this one. This is basically the right hand turnout because when you are standing over here, you can see that this track is going in the right direction. So that's why it is called as right hand turnout. Uh, if you just look at the overall of or total length of the turnout, that is the distance from <clears throat> the toe of switch to the heel of crossing. So this is basically the heel of crossing and this is the toe of switch. So here you can see the stock rail <clears throat> and the tongue rail. Again, you can see here the tongue rail and the stock rail. So basically this stock rail plus tongue rail that is called as switch. So this is one switch. You are having another switch over here that is the combination of the stock rail and the tongue rail. <clears throat> and for the tongue rail, you can see that you are having the minimum area of cross section at the end. And as far as the crossing is concerned, it consists of uh, wing rail, wing rails, these two, and this V piece. So this is called as the crossing. So this is the crossing. And uh, this is one switch, and this is the another switch. And here you can see the same thing, but it is a left hand turnout because when you are standing over here, you can see that this track is going in the left direction. So that's why it is called as the left hand turnout. So if you just look at uh, this particular slide, when we use the term point, it means two switches. I show two switches and you know, each switch is the combination of stock rail and tongue rail. So there are two switches and overall these two switches are considered as point. As far as the switch is concerned, uh, switch as I have already mentioned that is the combination of stock rail and the tongue rail and more area of cross section is involved in the case of tongue rail or oh, sorry the stock rail and the tongue rails case you would see that at the end the area of the cross section is minimum. Crossing uh, as I have already mentioned it consists of wing rails and V piece. And as far as the V piece is concerned, uh, V piece is consisted of point rail, 
and supplies rail. So point rail is more inland than the supplies rail. So first look at the point. A set of switches is termed as the point. So I will repeat a set of switches is termed as a point. Switches. All points consist of four rails. Two rails are known as stock rails and two rails are known as tongue rails. Combination of one stock rail and tongue rail is called switch. As I have already explained that the combination of one stock rail and tongue rail is considered as one switch. The tongue rail may be straight or curved. Both possibilities are there. Now here you will be able to get the real perception. So you can see here, this is basically the toe of the switch, the section where the switches are starting. So this is one switch. And uh, this is the other switch. And I have already mentioned that when we use the term switch, it is the combination of stock rail and the tongue rail. And look at that, that stock rail is having more area of cross section as compared to the tongue rail. And you can see that minimum area of cross section is over here. So this is one switch. And this is another switch because you can see it is a combination of stock rail and the tongue rail. And these two switches are treated as point. So these two switches, this one and this one, are treated as the point. So <clears throat> you can see that this is the, you can say, the toe of the switch where the area of cross section of the tongue rail is minimum. And uh, here, you know, this one, this is considered as the heel of the switch. So basically this is the switch. So the section where the toe, uh, the tongue rail is having the minimum area of cross section, or you can say the starting of the switch, that is the toe of switch. And where the switch is, switches, uh, switches are ending, that is considered as the heel of switch. Tongue rail has a very thin cross section at the toe of the switch to make a sunk fit section with stock rail so that you will be having a flush surface with the stock rail. The tongue is connected to the stock rail at the heel of switch with the help of heel blocks and fish plates. The tongue rails are supported on sliding plates and each pair of tongue rails is connected at the toe with the help of stretcher bars. So here you can see this is the tongue rail, this is the stock rail, and you can see the stretcher bar, this one, which uh, basically connecting the two tongue rails with each other. So with the help of uh, that arrangement that we are having over here, we can move the positions of the tongue rail. Now two important terms regarding point, facing point and trailing point. So I need your attention. If the train travels from the toe to heel of switch, the point is known as facing point. If the train passes over the heel first and afterwards toe, it is called trailing point. Now you can have a clear perception. You can see that this is the toe of the switch and this is the heel of the switch. So if the train is traveling in this way, what does this mean? That means the trail 
the train is traveling from toe to heel of the switch. So in this case, this point will be considered as the facing point. Now, look at this particular slide. Now here, let's assume that uh, the train is coming in this way. So what does this mean? It means the train is traveling from heel of switch to, to toe of the switch. And in this case, this particular point, you know, this one, this will be considered as the trailing point. Tongue rails are laid at slightly lower elevation than the stock rail to avoid the wearing. So look at that. This is slightly lower than the stock rail. The same set of points can act as facing as well as trailing points. When <coughs> the train passes over the point first and afterwards the crossing, the turnout is called facing turnout. So we have extended that concept for the turnout. So I will repeat that when the train passes over the point first and afterwards the crossing, the turnout is called facing turnout. Now look at this case. If the train passes the crossing first, and afterwards the point, then it is called trailing turnout. If we stand facing the point, the switch to the right is the right hand switch and to the left is the left hand switch. So if you are standing over here, so obviously this is the left hand switch, left switch and this is the the right switch. Now some other important terms. Throw off switch. The distance by which the toe of the tongue is moved from its contact position is considered as the throw off switch. Heel divergence. Distance between the stock rail and tongue rail at the heel of the switch is called heel divergence. Switch angle. Angle subtended between the gauge faces of the stock rail and tongue rail. And keep this in the mind that the gauge faces means the running faces, the faces of the rail with which the flanges of the wheels may be having the contact. So I will repeat switch angle, angle subtended between the gauge faces of the stock rail and tongue rail. Its value depends upon heel divergence and length of the tongue rail. The smaller the switch angle, the smoother is the running over the turnout. So here you can see again a few important things. Well, if you just look, you are standing over here. So obviously this is the left hand switch and this is the right hand switch. And uh, you can see that this is the tongue rail and uh, this is the stock rail. And here this is the tongue rail and this is the stock rail. And you can see that this is the heel divergence. This is also the heel divergence. And uh, you can see the angle, this one, this is the switch angle, alpha. Now look at this particular <coughs> figure. So you can see here in this case, the heel divergence is this one. And uh, the tongue rail is having the contact uh, with the stock rail at the moment, but actually the tongue rail was first over here. So it means we have moved this uh, tongue rail. We have shifted the tongue rail from this point to this. If you just look at this edge. So this is called as the throw of the switch. And uh, if you just look at this one, 
this part this length is considered the actual length of tongue rail and this is considered as the theoretical length of tongue rail so you can see that at the end of this you know the tongue rail we are having the reduction in the area of cross section but up to here you are having the uniform area of cross section for the tongue rail so distance from the heel divergence up to this section that is the actual length of tongue rail and uh, distance from this same section to the tip that is considered as the theoretical length so that is considered as the theoretical length of the tongue rail so again look at this right hand turn out so you will be having clear idea stock rail tongue rail so this is one switch tongue rail stock rail this is another switch and these two switches as a whole considered as the point so you can see the stretcher bar with the help of the stretcher bar the two tongue rails have been connected and parallel to that uh, you can even see this part this is the switch and we, uh, this is the crossing we will discuss the crossing later but first we are just focusing on the points and switches okay some other terms flange way it is provided as clearance for the movement of wheel flanges and for this reason it is known as flange way clearance flange way depth it is the vertical distance between the top of the heel block and uh, top of the head of stock rail so from this figure you can see the clear idea the flange of the wheel is having the contact with this face of this uh, stock rail <clears throat> and this is the tongue rail and uh, you can see that uh, this distance is considered as the flange way depth and if you just consider this distance from this face of rail to this this is called as the flange way clearance and uh, you can see that this is the tongue rail and this is the stock rail now again look at this right hand turn out you can see the stock rail you can see the tongue rail so what is this this is a switch and this is another switch because this is a combination of tongue rail and stock rail and this as a whole is considered as point now we have reached the topic of crossing the function of crossing is to enable the flanges of wheels to cross the rails components of crossing are v piece and wing rails there are two wing rails and there is one assembly which is called as v piece v piece consist of point rail and splice rail so it would not be wrong to say that v piece uh, it is a combination of point rail and splice rail point rail ends at nose of crossing and splice rail a little behind the nose so in this way you can say the point rail is having slightly more length as compared to splice rail so from this figure you can see this thing <clears throat> this is one wing rail this is another wing rail and this is the v piece and in this v piece one rail is the point rail the other is the splice rail so if you just look at this v piece it consists of two rails so one rail is the point rail the other is the splice rail so point rail is ending at the nose basically this is the nose this one the point where you are having the meeting i mean to say of the two rails of v piece so 
point rail is that one which is having slightly more length as compared to the length of the splice rail. Now here you can have the idea, further idea about uh, the crossing. So you can see here in this case, in this diagram, this is the wing rail, this is another wing rail. And you can see here the minimum gap is present between the wing rail. That is called as the throat. And if you just look at the V piece, so here one is the point rail and the other is the splice rail. The point rail is having more length as compared to splice rail. And this angle, angle between the running faces of the point rail and the splice rail is considered as the crossing angle. And the, here you can see two important terms, actual nose of crossing and theoretical nose of crossing. Uh, you can see that if we just extend the point rail and uh, the splice rail, so actually this is the meeting point which is quite sharp, but we can round it off like this and uh, you are having the end or you can say this is the point where the two rails are meeting actually. So this is considered as the actual nose of crossing and this is this was the theoretical nose of crossing. Point rail and surprise rails are connected together. Point rail ending at nose and splice rail little behind the nose. So that's why you know I'm saying this thing again and again that uh, point rail is having slightly more length. Actual nose is a bit less than theoretical nose as I described this thing on the previous slide. Theoretical nose is the point where the gauge face of point and splice rail cross and is a little ahead of actual nose. Otherwise, nose would be too slender if brought to a fine point. So again, you can see this part, this is the crossing. You can see the throat, you can see the theoretical nose of crossing, actual nose of crossing, and this is the V piece. And this angle, the angle subtended between the running faces of point rail and splice rail that is called as the crossing angle. The nose is kept at a slightly lower elevation that is about three by four inch in general. So toe of crossing and heel of crossing. So <clears throat> when you are moving towards the point towards the crossing. So the part or the section where the crossing is starting, that is called as toe of crossing. And uh, the section where the crossing is ending, that is called as heel of crossing. Angle of crossing, as I have already mentioned, the angle between the gauge faces of point rail and splice rail. And to keep this thing in the mind that gauges Gauge faces are the faces with which wheel flanges come in contact. The size of the crossing is measured by its angle. So again, look at that same figure. So you can see this is the crossing angle. This is the wing rail. This is another wing rail. This is the V piece. And you know the V piece is consisted of point rail and supplies rail. Throat, as I mentioned earlier, is the narrowest space between the two wing rails where they are bent. Check rails are provided for guiding the flange of the wheel when the opposite wheel is negotiating the gap at the crossing. Wing rails guide the flange of the wheel when it moves over the throat. The rails which connect point with the crossing are called lead rails. So basically 
the connecting rails between the point and crossing that, that that rails are called as the lead rails so you can see this thing this is point this is the crossing and you can see that uh, this is the lead rail this one this is the lead rail this is inner curve lead rail and this is the outer curve lead rail so now here you can see the actual crossing so look at that if you just look at this one this is one switch this is another switch so it means that's the point and here you can see the crossing this is one wing rail this is another wing rail the minimum distance between the two is over here that is the throat and you can see this is the V piece so two wing rails this one and this and this V piece that is known as crossing and if you just look at the V piece, this rail is having more length. Look at that. So this is the point rail. And what is this? Obviously, this is the splice rail. And you can also see the check rail, which has been provided over here. Size of a crossing is expressed in terms of distance required in spreading point and splice rail by one foot. I will repeat, size of a crossing is expressed in terms of distance required in spreading point and splice rail by one foot. Uh, the space is measured uh, this one you know the space is measured between gauge faces of the rails if the spread between the point rail and splice rail at a distance of x feet from the nose of crossing is one foot the size of crossing is one into x this is very important to understand the size of crossing. So I will repeat this point. If the spread between the point rail and splice rail at a distance of X feet from the nose of crossing is one foot, the size of crossing is one into X. So generally the sizes are like that, one in 8.5, one in 12, one in 16. So crossing with small angles are used over the track where high speed prevails. So again, look at this thing. If the spread between the point rail and splice rail, when we are saying the spread between the point rail and splice rail, that means the distance from the gauge face of point rail to the gauge face of splice rail. That is, if the spread between the point rail and splice rail at a distance x feet from the nose of crossing is one foot. That means we are <coughs> measuring the distance from the nose of the crossing and that distance is x feet. And at distance of x feet, you are having a spread of one foot. Spread of one foot between the point rail and the splice rail. <coughs> so, as a rule, rough rule, you can say, permissible speed in miles per hour is kept less than twice the number used in the size of crossing. For example, speed over 1 in 10 crossing should be kept below 20 miles per hour because here you can see the x value that is 10. 
so as per this rough rule permissible speed in miles per hour is kept less than twice the number used in the size of crossing so in this lecture we discussed the points and crossings in detail thank you